In line with the theme, now is the time for collective bargaining for agriculture, I want to give you a report on just what was going on at the National Convention in Omaha this year as far as the Hog Department was concerned. I think many of you that were there remember we had several pens of hogs set up. The results of those pens of hogs are this. Pen number one was worth $238.79. Pen number two had a yield of 78.45. Pen number three had an average weight of 216 and 4 tenths pounds. Many of the producers had made an estimate of exactly what those uh, pens would yield and weigh and what their value was as a part of the hog program. Also appearing on the program, we had Dr. Haverkamp, Vice President of Economics from Wilson & Company, Mr. Joel Dorfman, who is a Vice President in charge of the Fresh Pork Division for Frederick Heroid, Mr. Sharlupski, who is a Vice President in charge of the Smoked Pork Division for Frederick Heroid in Detroit, Mr. Dan Hoffman, who is the National Marketing Director for the National Pork Producers, and Mr. Dean Conferno, who is an assistant to the Vice President of Pig America Magazine. These people all appeared on your program. In addition to the guests that we had there, many of our industry representatives had the opportunity to meet with the Secretary of Agriculture concerning the nitrite problem in regard to the pork industry. All in all, it was a convention of impact, and it certainly presented a side of the hog industry that we have not had the opportunity to look at before. Now, I want to tell you about our direction and where we're going to go from here. Using the theme of the convention as a kickoff, now is the time for collective bargaining for agriculture. Let's just stop and analyze our progress. We started out in 1976 with a commitment to bargain. We had 7,000 people sign the commitment to bargain that believed it could happen, that it was possible to price hogs at cost of production. From that start, we negotiated interim supply contracts with various packing companies around the country. Now, in 1978, we have introduced a contract for NFO members. I'm going to relate to that contract a little bit later. We hope to take that contract and carry it forward to incorporate a cost of production clause as a part of our 1978 program. We must extend the efficiency of producing that you've done such a super job in developing in your operations to the efficiency of marketing because I think it is time now that the stereos, the air conditioners that are so commonplace in the offices around the United States become a part of the cost of production of the American hog producer. I'd like to introduce Orrin Lee Staley, our national president, to make several comments. Alan has told me that they now have commitments from packers that would total about 84,000 head of hogs a week. This would be a substantial increase over what we have. The hog volume has been growing very well. Certainly the market reaction has to be attributed to a great degree to the fact that our volume has been growing and we've been moving hogs into new patterns. That means as, as hogs move out of the old patterns, the buyers in the area they move from have to bid up. We're doing it over an, enough of a hog producing area that this has an effect on the general price level. But you cannot have that continued effect unless you have enough hogs immediately to meet those contractual commitments that are now available. Thank you, Orrin Lee. The contract that Orrin Lee is talking about is a hog contract for members of the National Farmers Organization, an interim supply agreement in behalf of NFO members based on sales of hogs to various packing companies. The intent of this agreement is to provide NFO members with a hog marketing and bargaining tool that will assist them in their drive to secure cost of production under contract. The terms of this agreement are a result of contracts negotiated with buyers by NFO in behalf of members. This enables all NFO members in any given area to participate equally with quality and weights considered in the benefits of all buyer contracts secured. 
This agreement for the area will begin upon ratification by NFO members through the completion of a valid contract for sale with hogs in sufficient amounts to meet volume requirements. The key point is that this is a result of contracts negotiated with buyers. Another point in this agreement is this agreement shall remain in full force for 90 days. At the fulfillment of the producer's contract for sale, the producer shall be asked to expand his NFO contract by committing the next block of hogs that he will market. Another point is, and this is probably key, the intent of this agreement is to block sufficient numbers of hogs into marketing patterns that we can standardize weights, grade and yield standards, and establish a cost of production formulation as a part of this contract. That is the contract that your national president was talking about. Now, we've got some other things in the wings here that we want to look at before we go on, and I've asked Roger Blank to give us a synopsis of just what is going on in the markets and what we can expect from the normal market patterns next year. Roger? Thank you, Alan. You'll recall last February, early part of March, the USDA economists were forecasting a $30 hog market. That's last March 1977. Well, it never happened. Actually, the market did get as low as $34, but uh, certainly a far cry from 30 now, this same economist did forecast a 10 to 13 percent increase in uh, FIS slaughter uh, for 1978, and the December 22nd pig uh, crop report fairly well bears this out. Uh, for example, all hogs and pigs on hand as of December 1st, a 5 percent increase over the same period a year ago. Hogs kept for breeding, a 9% increase, and hogs kept for market purposes, a 4% increase. Uh, the same token, hogs uh, and pigs uh, on hand under 60 pounds, uh, there is a 7% increase. Those 120 to 179 pounders, a 2% increase. I think I over... Look, the 60 to 119, that's a 3% increase there. The 120 to 179, a 2% increase. The 180 to 219 pound live weights on hand, a 5% increase. And the current weights of 220 and over, actually a 10% decline over the corresponding period a year ago. Now, as far as sows farrowing, the December, February, that's December 77, February 78, they're anticipating a 12% increase in farrowing. Or if you want to look at it from another point of view, the December, May farrowings are estimated to be a 9% increase. In this same light, the USDA economists also forecast about 30 days prior to this pig crop report a live market ranging from 31 to 34 dollars during the calendar year of 1978 with some extreme lows at a level of 29 dollars. Now frankly we don't think this is going to happen but it is an indication of a trend in some people's minds and it doesn't have to happen. Another point of the market that one might want to consider is the hog futures. You'll recall that Several people in the uh, commodity futures just recently covered some short positions, and we feel this has contributed uh, substantially to the high live market we've just uh, uh, come off of. In fact, as of today, which is December 29th, this live market has declined from $1 to $2 a hundredweight on most terminals. But let's look at the February close on the hog futures. The close I'm talking about is December the 28th. February close was 42.97. If you relate that on a hog contract of 30,000 pounds or approximately 130 head, uh, you're talking about a delivered price to the packer of approximately $40. And naturally, if you are delivering hogs of this category, and they are high-yielding hogs, uh, you should consider 
the strong possibility of selling them on a grain yield basis. Uh, this way you can increase your result even more favorably. April futures as of December the 28th was quoted at 38.40. This would realize approximately uh, 35 and a half uh, delivered to the packer. That would be your price. June forty dollars and ten cents you can work that back to where it would be approximately thirty seven dollars and ten cents uh, delivered to the packer that you would be realizing this just gives you some idea as to the outlook and the forecast in the future insofar as the live hog market is concerned the market experts supply and demand says that we can look at lower hog prices in 1978 it doesn't have to be that way I would like to introduce Mark Rofing, a young man from southern Missouri. Thank you, Alan. As young producers, we must realize that inflation will not keep us in business like it has producers of our father's generation. To stay in business, we must make a profit to pay for our operations. Productions show 1978 fixed costs could be as high as $28 to $32 per hundredweight. Farmers our age must join in the fight to price our production so we can cover all our costs. Profit is essential for people to stay in the hog business. Any way you cut it, the bottom line has got to be black figures or they're going to go out of the hog industry. We have put together a plan where we have asked people to commit themselves to bringing five other people to a nationwide meeting. If 3,000 people each will bring five people to that meeting, that's 15,000 plus the 3,000 or 18,000 producers bargaining together to price hogs. That is roughly 30% of all the commercial hog producers in the United States. We plan on doing that in 1978. To accomplish that and to accomplish the improvement in the contracts that we're talking about here, we need volume. That means that you must put your hogs on a contract for sale join the organization if you're not a member and participate in one of the many programs that are available to you the bottom line of the department is to develop a cost of production program and a profit making program for hog producers in the united states twenty eight dollars is unreal it won't cover your fixed cost young people going out of hog production is unreal it'll never perpetuate the industry and probably first and foremost the protection of your way of life as a hog producer is essential that you become a part of the nfo hog program and price hogs in the year 1978 instructions for contract ratification you as a county hog coordinator or as a key producer in the area must do several things to make this is success. One, you must secure copies of the formulations and contracts for sale from either the hog rep or the department. Two, you bring your hog committee together in a meeting. Number three, at this meeting you divide up the producers by township. Number four, you make arrangements with one of the committeemen to contact each producer in each township playing the tape and asking them to participate. And number five, calling the results into the hog department sometime after five o'clock each day. After five, we will be available to discuss various formulations in various areas and also to give you a progress report as to our position on the total contract. I want to commend you on doing a fine job on the Wilson contract when we ratified that this contract will be a, a basic Wilson contract plus the Frederick Harrod proposal in Detroit plus a Waldock proposal plus there are several other packers that have asked us for a supply of hogs that will be incorporated into this as we go into the ratification good luck I guess that's the only way to say it it's going to take a lot of guts and hard work but let's get her done give us a call Every evening there will be someone in the department to talk with you.